Good morning, television family. Good to see you again. Happy Thursday, 18th day of July, 2024. I'm Dan Koontz. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. 75 very mild degrees. We're going to be pushing, well, probably over 100 today. Heat wave continues. We had that little brief break yesterday. It only hit 95. And the reason why is that we had high clouds prevalent for almost the entire day, and that kept the the heat from really radiating. Well, those high clouds are they're gone. The big ridge of high pressure will reestablish itself. It's going to amplify. It's going to cook us big time. The heat advisory that was supposed to end tomorrow afternoon has been extended right through the weekend. Record high temperatures certainly within the realm of possibility Saturday and Sunday and maybe Monday. We eventually cool down to the lower 90s by Tuesday and Wednesday, but this heat wave, which began basically the day after Independence Day, July 5th, and is now over two weeks old, will continue at least through Monday. Your very warm weather forecast is on the way. Plus, it was a busy day in the newsroom. If you don't believe me, stick around. We'll do the news. It is uh, Thursday. Pause for pets. It is uh, Baya the dog. Needs a home. Eric Granstrom had a very fascinating conversation. You don't want to miss this. With bodybuilding grandma Maggie Rivera. She just got back from New Jersey. She went to New Jersey not long ago to participate in a bodybuilding competition. And she did really good. A conversation with a, a local legend, if you will. Uh, we'll come your way in the back half of the program. And uh, it's, 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 we got a good show for you today. Normally, of course, it's the middle of summertime. We're just here and you know, we're not working too hard, but why not? We'll give you a good show today, all right? Let's take our tour around the valley here in a couple minutes after the hour from our Wenatchee Heights camera. Looking right up the Columbia River, the air is considerably cleaner today than it was yesterday. We didn't have any real wind. There's still some dirty air up Chelan Way. We'll get to that in just a little bit from the Pioneer Fire, but uh, it doesn't look too bad at all today. Very pleasant morning, but it's very mild, 75 degrees, and our forecast high today is in the triple digits because we are off to a very mild start. All right, we've been checking in with Lake Chelan quite a bit lately, and why not? Because a lot of people gravitate to the lake, and that is a shot from our lower Butte camera, the Chelan Butte. We have that pointed up the lake. South Shore is on your left, North Shore is on your right. The air is dirty. The AQI is at 100, right at 100 in downtown Chelan. It's 74 in Twisp. It's 74 in Brewster. That is right at the very tip of moderate. If it goes to 101, and it probably will, that moves from moderate to unhealthy for sensitive groups. Again, that's all residual smoke from the Pioneer Fire. There's no place for the smoke to go. Here's another view from the Chelan Butte. This is our upper Butte camera, so we're going to go up about 1,500 feet to the very top of Chelan Butte. And we're looking back over to the Waterville Plateau. You can see it just a little sliver of the Columbia River down there. So a tad smoky up in the Waterville area. They don't have an AQI monitor up there, so I don't know what the air quality is in Waterville. But that's also on the same Chelan Butte as the camera you just saw. That's just a different camera higher up and pointed in another direction. And speaking of Chelan, on your way to Chelan, you might take the Navarre Cooley Road, which dumps you off at the State Park. And that's what that looks like today. And that doesn't look too bad at all there. That's a very pleasant drive indeed. We haven't used that camera in a while, the Navarra Cooley camera, but why not? There you go. We have the heat advisory. They have extended it and widened it. It is now more real estate than it was before. It's been extended until 10 o'clock on Sunday. And before yesterday, the upper right-hand quadrant of your screen up there in Ponderay County, including Colville and Republic, that was not part of the heat advisory. Now it is. So basically all of eastern Washington, with the exception of the very far lower right-hand corner down there in Clarkston, uh, is under a heat advisory, which has now been extended until 10 o'clock Sunday. It was supposed to expire yesterday, or tomorrow. It was supposed to expire tomorrow. It's not. They have extended it because the heat will likely continue to get hotter and hotter as the week progresses. From the National Weather Service, how about 102? For the forecast high today, we're not expecting any high clouds. That short wave came and went. There was some light rain in some locations, but to our knowledge, there are no new wildfires started by lightning strikes. We dodged a bullet, 
and now here comes the heat again. Clear tonight, 69 for the overnight low. Tomorrow, maybe a degree or two cooler because we're going to have a cooler start to the day. We're at 75 now. We'll be at about 70 or so at this time tomorrow. So not quite as hard, but still 100. And now we're talking record territory. Our forecast high Saturday is 106. Our record high for Saturday is 105. Set back in 1979. I think we're going to break that. Look at the, how mild it's going to be Saturday night. 76 for the overnight low. And then Sunday, 109. The forecast afternoon high, the record high, 105. Set back in 1994. So Saturday could set a record Sunday. It's almost a certainty. Probably not Monday, even though the forecast high Monday is 104. The record high Monday is 107. Set back in 1994, so we're probably not going to get there. And then we cool down finally on Tuesday and Wednesday. It looks like Tuesday night and Wednesday, I'll be able to finally turn off my air conditioner and give it a rest. But in the meantime, just plain hot right through Monday. Going to take a break. When we come back, we'll let you know what made news over the last 24 hours or so. You're watching Wake Up Anachi Valley Thursday edition on the NCW Life channel. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, located on South Wenatchee Ave, has the largest selection of spas and swim spas in town. Stay cool this summer in an artesian swim spa and use it all year long. We enjoy helping families reconnect one spa at a time. Hot tubs are proven to improve sleep and decrease arthritis pain. Our passion is water, so please bring us a water sample and we will help you diagnose your pool or spa water for free. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, your pool and spa experts. The family at the Epladolin want to help your loved one feel at ease in their new home environment. Epladolin offers beautiful one bedroom and studio apartments. Residents enjoy three delicious home style meals a day, laundry service, housekeeping service, and encouragement to make themselves cozy in their new home. Epladolin welcomes your family to come and visit their family. Epladolin, independent and assisted living. They make the complicated easy for you. Call today for a tour. As sheriff, I arrested rioters, rapists, and mass murderers, locked up human traffickers who preyed on women and children. On my watch, everyone was accountable. Despite being the attorney general for 12 years, Bob Ferguson does not take responsibility for the rapid increase in crime and homelessness, businesses moving out of state, and jobs lost. And he thinks he deserves a promotion? Dave Reichert. Global Car Care has the best customer service in the Valley. From the moment you walk in the door, their goal is to help you stay on the road. So you can keep doing what's important to you. Global Car Care certified ASE mechanics stand behind your automotive repairs. skies if you like sunny and hot weather you're gonna love the next five days we'll be in the triple digits right through Monday the heat advisory has been extended until 10 o'clock Sunday night probably will be extended into Monday before we finally get a break from this heat wave it's uh, eight minutes after the hour Quincy police say a street fight and the display of an apparent firearm on Quincy night on Tuesday night led to the arrest of two men in the 300 block of Q Street Southeast in Quincy Police were called to the site at about 11 o'clock on a report of people fighting and a gun being displayed. Three people fled the scene before police arrived, but officers from Moses Lake and the Grant County Sheriff's Office assisted in cordoning off the area. They located a residence where the suspects had allegedly taken shelter. Two men were arrested and they faced possible charges of first degree assault. The third person was a juvenile. That person was released. That is the gun in question. It turned out to be a realistic looking pellet rifle that was styled to look like an AR-15. Staying in Grant County, three Grant County Sheriff's deputies have undergone remedial driver training after a pair of vehicle collisions that happened last winter. You might remember this. The Sheriff's Office says in addition, one deputy was suspended from duty and two deputies received a written reprimand and another deputy sided with a traffic infraction. The first collision happened back in December when two Sheriff's patrol cars ran into each other 
On Highway 17 in North Lake Road, just outside of Moses Lake, they were responding to a fatal accident near the airport. The other involved a single deputy in January. Both crashes were investigated by the Washington State Patrol. All three deputies have since completed their discipline and remedial training have been returned to full duty. A fire overnight Tuesday into Wednesday at an irrigation pump house has left about 280 people without irrigation water in southwestern Wenatchee. The pump house pulls water out of the nearby Reclamation Canal and without it, the Millerdale Irrigation District can't deliver water to its customers. District President Steve Sadler told us that the fire broke out at about 11.15 on Tuesday night and it destroyed the shed plus all the automation that regulates the water flow. So it could be days before a temporary solution is put in place. Sadler says no fix is likely before the end of next week. The cause of the blaze is being investigated by the Wenatchee Valley Fire Marshal. Ballots, of course, are getting mailed out this week for the August primary election, and the Wenatchee Valley Fire Department hopes voters will approve a new way to pay for fire protection. A fire benefit charge would radically decrease the role of property taxes in paying for fire service, but it would impose a new cost based on the square footage of the building. Fire Chief Brian Brett tells us if voters allow it, the new charge could result in tax savings while also funding the Valleywide Fire Department well into the future. He'll be holding public meetings on the proposal at local fire stations on July 24th and again on the 27th. It needs a 60% supermajority to pass. So we give up 33% of our revenue by reducing property taxes. So we have to make that back and we make that back with the benefit charge. And that's based on the square footage of the occupancy. And it's divided in three categories between residential apartment complexes and commercial buildings. And to a certain extent, you expect residential homeowners to see a bit of a decrease in the amount of tax they're paying for their fire protection, even though it would amount to better, more consistent revenue for your department. Yes, currently as it sits, 54% of the people pay what they currently pay or less. And the, the mechanics of it are, our budget can only grow by 1%. So as we get this growth we've had, which is between 10, 15, 17% year over year for several years, we don't get to capture that growth. We often get asked, well, we see all this growth, you, get, you have to be rolling in revenue. That's not the case. Microsoft, for example, could put $1 trillion worth of buildings in service today. We would get a little spike of new construction revenue. It would go on the tax roll the following year. Our rate would re go down from $1.50 to, say, 50 cents with a trillion dollars going into it because we can only go up by 1%. With the fire benefit charge, we could charge the benefit to that new property that was placed in service, which would allow us to track for inflation, which would then allow us to not necessarily have to pass on any costs to anybody else in our jurisdiction. The Eastmont School Board is considering three options on an educational programs an operations levy. It's a renewal levy. It's commonly known as an EPNO. EPNO levies provide funding for educational items that's not funded by the state. That would be extracurricular activities like sports, music programs, staff salaries, and staff benefits. The district says the current levy rate of a buck seventy per one thousand dollars of assessed value will not keep pace with projected expenditures and reductions to student programs are going to be needed. The second option is a $1.95 per $1,000. That would require modest reductions to student programs, but most current programs could continue as offered. The third option increases the levy rate to $2.10 per $1,000 of assessed evaluation, and the district says that amount would expand student programs in support and said the board will hold a special meeting to take action on the recommendations July 29th. And finally, if you're a regular user of Badger Mountain Road today, heads up. Delays on Badger Mountain Road because Douglas County Road crews are going to be pre-leveling a paving section of Badger Mountain Road just outside the East Wenatchee City limits. The county says there will be one lane traffic with up to 20 minute delays. So motorists, if you want to avoid any delays in that area, you're advised to use Fancher Field Road to East Mont Avenue. Crews will be working today. Well, they're working right now. They started at 6.30 this morning. They'll work till 5 o'clock 
this afternoon in the heat. You were warned. That's the news at quarter after the hour. We think it's important that you know what the heck is going on around North Central Washington, the Wenatchee Valley. That's why we do the news for you at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. 5, 6, and 10 on television right here on the NCW Life channel. If you consume your news via your, your tablet or your computer or your smart, most TVs are pretty smart nowadays. Some TVs are smarter than me, and that's downright scary. Quite frankly, a lot of things are smarter than me. Anyway, you can watch the news online right around 5 o'clock on our homepage, ncwlife.com, our YouTube page, our Facebook page. We have an app. We have an X. We have an Instagram. We oftentimes break out in song in the newsroom because, well, why not? And download the QR code. It's right there. And send us an email if there's something you think is newsworthy. News at ncwlife.com. The West Coast League All-Star Game was played last night at Joe Martin Field in Bellingham, and it was a thriller. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. My favorite thing about living at Prestige is the activities. I think it's just so good for you to have a group that you can have fun with. I think if you keep moving and you have a social life, you're going to live longer. And that attitude is fostered by the activity director and the managers. It's a good place, it's a happy place, and it's where I plan to stay forever. Me too. When you buy tires at Les Schwab, you're getting more than just tires. You're getting America's best tire warranty, 60-day satisfaction guarantee, no hassle road hazard protection, and free maintenance for the life of your tires. So if something happens to your tire on the road, we'll fix it or we'll replace it. No questions asked. Other places make you pay extra for that kind of protection. But at Les Schwab, it's included with every set of tires because more warranty means less worry. And nobody stands by their tires like Les Schwab. Get more from Les. Apple Valley Honda is bringing the future of driving to you. Introducing the all-new, all-electric Honda Prologue EV. Say goodbye to gas stations and hello to a whisper-quiet ride in zero emissions. The wait is over. Finally, a local option for a quality EV from a brand with a track record of exceptional quality and reliability. Experience the Honda Prologue EV for yourself at family-owned Apple Valley Honda. Stay close to home and visit us at Apple Valley Honda today for the life you live. Since 1932, Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Seneca's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Seneca today, www.campfirencw.org. Eighteen minutes after the hour, it was a dramatic finish to last night's West Coast League All-Star Game in Bellingham. Gavin Jones of the Colonia Fal Colonia Falcons was the hero for the South in the bottom of the ninth inning. He hit a two-out bases loaded grounder that the shortstop for the South team couldn't quite corral. Both runs scored. Here is how last night's bottom of the ninth unfolded. So another guy. Turning around to Summer. And that one's laced into center field for a base hit. It's a leadoff single for Jonathan Fitz to get things going here in the ninth for the North. Find a gap somewhere, get that exit velo cranking. Missed. Down for ball four, and it's first and second to get things started in the bottom of the ninth. Every single at bat the rest of the way is going to be somebody trying to be a hero or thinking about being a hero. Riley Paulino is not going to have to do much as the first one glances off at him and the tying run is 90 feet away and the winning run two stations away now for the North Division here in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, this is a situation where you don't want to, you feel like you're going to have to start pitching away from the middle of the play, especially after you give up that first base hit. Noonan singled to load the bases his last time up and his 1-1 bounced too short. They'll get the out at the plate to throw to first, not made there by Woodcook, but a great job to hold on to it as Spencer Shipman, who has moved over to short. No, check that. That is Tayukamoto at short. He's the one to get the out at the plate. 
Hohenstein might have to go outside the zone to put away this game. 2 2. Oh, just off the plate inside. Hohenstein thought he had it. And Zachary Burr, the home plate umpire, disagreed. Full like, count, the runners are going to be off. Looks like this pitch was in, too. And look, he, everything he's trying to see, the breaking ball middle of the plate, or fastballs up and away. You can see where the catch is set up as well. Three balls, two strikes, two gone. Bases loaded in a one-run game. Runners away. Ground ball left side. Stopped on the dive. A run scores, and the go-ahead and winning run will score as well. It's a walk-off victory on the infield single for Gavin Jones, and the North has pulled it out, a 3-2 to two win. Jones try not to do too much with that pitch just getting something to hit into left field but we talked about some of the hesitancy on the base running holding guys up at third base throughout this game zero hesitancy with that trail running coming around second base even though that ball is trapped at shortstop big two run single right there three two count wow what a way to finish this game it was pretty damn exciting as, as far as the local nine is concerned the apple Sox. They have one more day off today, then they resume their second half schedule tomorrow night at home against the Yakima Valley Pippins. First pitch is 6:35, and we will have the game right here on the NCW Life Channel. Well, this week we've been getting to know the brand new coach of the Wenatchee Wild, Don Knockbauer. Knockbauer began his NHL career with the Hartford Whalers back in 1979. In 1980, he moved on to the Edmonton Oilers, and when you play for the Edmonton Oilers, in the 1980s, you get to play with some very famous hockey players. As a matter of fact, the year I was in Edmonton, uh, the team lost uh, to the New York Islanders four straight. The following year, I went to Edmonton's training camp. I was picked up by on waivers by the LA Kings, and then uh, Edmonton went on a four-year run of uh, winning Stanley Cup. So they got me out of there, and they just started to win. <laughs> and, and now that you mentioned Gretz, just so you know, um, my first year in Hartford, 79-80 uh, season, Gordy Howe was on the team. And my idol as a kid, uh, Dave Keon, who's still a friend today, but uh, uh, rooming with Dave was was uh, quite memorable and quite pleasurable. And uh, to be honest, he's still a friend today. So it, it made my hockey career. Knockbauer says he watched the transition when Winnipeg moved to Wenatchee before last year's WHL season, and he says he's impressed by what he's seen. I knew about the Wenatchee, um, you know, uh, sale last summer. I was well aware of what was going on there, and um, you know, just just the um, the process of uh, being an expansion team and trying to come into the West, especially coming out of the BC Junior, because the leagues run a lot different. So it was all interesting, and, and Bliss did a great job of the transition from the BC Junior to a West League team. He had a lot to learn, and he's done a great job. Coach will be moving from the Tri-Cities up here to the big city over the next month in time for the Wilds training camp in August. And by the way, Eric's complete conversation with the new coach is on our website. Go to ncwlife.com, go to full episodes for Wake Up Anchee Valley from this past Monday. It's well worth your time. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this, what is this, 18th day of July. Happy Constitution Day in Uruguay. Uh, this is celebrating their first Constitution. They've had like seven, but it's Constitution Day in Uruguay. National Sour Candy Day. It's National Get to Know Your Customers Day. It's Insurance Nerd Day. My insurance agent is not a nerd. My insurance agent is the mayor of Wenatchee. But no, today we're going to eat wild sturgeon eggs, sometimes known as caviar. Caviar is definitely an acquired taste. It's also unbelievably expensive, like it's ridiculous. In fact, you, there's caviar out there that costs 40,000 euros per kilo. It's incredibly expensive, and all it is is wild sturgeon eggs. As you can see there, they go, wait, wait a minute, that's different color caviars. They have different colors and they can range from light gray to black. Of course, you were never ever supposed to eat caviar with silver because silver degrades the taste of the product. It should be on wood or better yet, mother of pearl spoons. 
and the best caviar in the world is considered Russian sturgeon, beluga sturgeon, or stellet sturgeon. <coughs> Any way you look at it, it's fish eggs. And it's salty, <coughs> and it's expensive. I had it once, and that's good enough for me. <coughs> and it's funny, because I like salty foods, but not a caviar guy, it's 25 minutes after the hour. Today in history, all the way back in 1872, 152 years ago today, the folks in the United Kingdom, well, they passed the Ballot Act, which means from this point forward, all elections for government offices in Great Britain and the United Kingdom will be held by secret ballot. Now, we, you know, we've always had that. But before 1872, your vote was public. Employers and landowners would stand there and watch their employees or their tenants vote. Now, if they didn't like them, they threw them out or they fired them. That's how it used to be. Everybody knew who you voted for. They got that. They got rid of that 152 years ago. Today. Can, you, can you imagine that today in America if everybody's vote was made public? <clears throat> Thank God for the secret ballot. 71 years ago today, July 18th, 1953, there is the acetate. 18-year-old truck driver Elvis Aaron Presley pops into the Memphis Recording Service at the Sun Record Company. He plunks over five, three dollars and 98 cents. And for Elvis Presley in 1953, three dollars and 98 cents was a lot of money. And he records the first of two double-sided demo acetates, one side by happiness, on the other side, that's when your heartaches begin. He gets one copy. He reportedly gives the acetate to his mother as a birthday gift. Most people don't believe it. That was Elvis' story. I did it for my mom for her birthday. There's two reasons people don't believe it, and I've read a lot of biographies in Elvis Presley, and I believe the biographers. Number one, Gladys Presley's birthday was like two months earlier. And number two, the Presleys didn't have a record player, so why he would cut a record for his mom when they couldn't play it is beyond me. I think everybody agrees that what he really wanted to do was get noticed by Sam Phillips, the owner of Sun Records. Well, it worked, by the way. Estimated value of that one and only copy of My Happiness, the first record Elvis ever made, half a million dollars. This is the 25th anniversary of one of the most remarkable baseball games ever. It was Yogi Berra Day at Yankee Stadium. Yogi Berra had not been to Yankee Stadium for 14 years. He had been fired in 1985 by George Steinbrenner as the manager of the Yankees. He didn't like it, boycotted Yankee Stadium. They finally made up. They held Yogi Berra Day at Yankee Stadium on Sunday, July 18, 1999. Before the game began, Don Larson threw out the ceremonial first pitch to Yogi, commemorating Don Larson's 1956 World Series perfect game. And then David Cohn takes the mound against the Montreal Expos. And here's the final out. Popped up and playable. Gracious. A perfect hey. save by David Cohn. Awesome is that David Cohn throws a perfect game on Yogi Berra Day with Don Larson in attendance. Baseball is a remarkable sport. And baseball is also the home of some very strange plays. Three years ago, it is the first inning. It's the Mets and the Pirates in Pittsburgh. There's no other way to explain this play than to simply watch it. Loaded for Newman. They said to go, go, go. It's a fair ball! It's a fair ball! Oh my goodness! It's a fair ball! Do you believe this? It's still in play! Pirates score three! Oh my gosh! We've seen it all now! We've seen it all! There goes Rojas! He might not be the first! He 
just bumped the home plate umpire. Let's see. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Touching the chalk, touching the oh, chalk. Oh, he it made was. the he made the right he call. He made the right call. That ball was oh. on the chalk. One of the most bizarre plays you'll ever see in your entire life. Yeah, the problem was they just stood there and argued. The ball is in play. <laughs> the Pirates scored three runs on that play. Anyway, baseball. It's a funny game. It's the bottom of the hour. Two heavenly birthdays. Nelson Mandela, of course, who spent a great deal of his adult life in prison. The very first president of South Africa, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, born in the state in 1918. Nelson Mandela died in 2013 at the age of 95. Still kind of a controversial guy. He did embrace communism, and that's just part of his history. Born 103 years ago today, John Glenn. Born in the state 1921. Of course, uh, he passed away in 2016 at the age of 95. The first American to orbit the Earth. For 24 years, he served with great distinction as the U.S. Senator from Ohio. The only person to fly in both the Mercury and Space Shuttle programs. He went back up in the Space Shuttle when he was 77 years old, and he was the last surviving member of the original Mercury 7, the right stuff. John Glenn, born in the state 1921. He's the Wanderer. Keep away from run around Sue, Abraham Martin, and John. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Dion. Going strong at 85. I listened to some Dion last night, and it is good. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor. That would be Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. This is an unprecedented heat wave, even for Wenatchee in July. We're used to the heat, but come on. How's your AC holding up? If you're not sure, give Alpine Air a call for heat and air call Alpine Air. And I know they have air conditioning at Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista, their May campus in Wenatchee, and their satellite campus in East Wenatchee. Eric Grandstrom had a fantastic conversation with a woman you're going to fall in love with. Her name is Maggie Rivera. She's in her early 60s. She's a grandma, and she can beat me up. Trust me on that. Uh, Mike McNaughty's got an opinion, but first things first, Bay of the Dog needs a home. It's Paws for Pets. Paws for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery, Leavenworth, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. Hi, I'm Corley with Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, Animal Care Manager, and um, today we have Bea. And Bea is an 11 year old pit bull. And she, if we had awards here, she would win Sweetest Dog of the Year. We are absolutely infatuated with Bea. Um, and she's infatuated with her stuffed lamb. <laughs> I will not be surprised if this entire uh, video, she doesn't let go of it, <laughs> but we'll see. Bea has um, kind of a sad story. Um, she was with the family for 11 years, her whole life. And they, um, they had to move and could not take her with them. So she's been discovering um, life outside of her family that she knows here at the shelter. And she's been so resilient and she's doing so good and she's so loved here, um, but she needs to have a real home again. And that's what we really want for her. She's so sweet and easy. Yes, we've been doing um, office fosters with her, so she's spending time with our, our, our office staff, um, curling up next to their desks, and they're really enjoying having her because she's so quiet and easy. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, Bea knows a couple tricks. She can sit, even without treat prompting, which is amazing and she'll lay down and she will fetch her favorite stuffy right away if you ask her <laughs> sometimes without asking all the time yes she loves ear scratches and she just loves people um, because she was an owner surrender we do have a little more information about her um, she doesn't really care so much for other dogs <laughs> Um, so we do suggest uh, that if you're interested that she be your only child and she will make it worth it. <laughs> uh, we don't know about cats because they didn't have one, but probably not a good idea if she's not great with other dogs, probably not cats, I would assume. 
but um, but she's great with people of all ages and yeah we love her so we would really love you to come meet her we are open Thursday through Tuesday um, 12 30 to 6 and if you would like to make an appointment uh, you can come in anytime that works for you on Wednesday just go on our website and um, schedule there Bea do you have anything you'd like to say I could need to better myself. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. Paws for Pets is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Merry Maids, Doghouse Brewery Leavenworth, and Club Crow Bar and Grill. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, okay, I need to know, th does my wife Rosie have some kind of superpower? It seems like everywhere I'm about to go, she either gets there first or gets in my way. Now, the other day I was about to get a paper towel, and as soon as I turned in that direction, she got between me and the paper towel dispenser. Uh, and she put something in the trash. I mean, you, know, you know, another time, I just turned to go to into our kitchen computer, and as I headed there, she got in front of me, already sitting down at the desk. You know, and it's not just in our home where this happens, it's everywhere. And not only that, just I'm about to do something, like open a window. She says to me, Mike, open the window. <laughs> this happens all the time. Now I need to know, does, does every wife do this? I really think I need to report this to someone. I mean, this is a miracle. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect. No matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Localtel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509-888-8888 today. Downtown Wenatchee, something for everyone. 
Find custom floral designs for any occasion at Mountain Chick Floral. Even more wonderful plants and gifts abound in every corner in their new location at 7A South Wenatchee Avenue. The Original Children's Shop offers sweet summertime outfits for your newborn to eight-year-old. Stop in for all the essentials you need to have a fun summer. Swimsuits, sandals, towels, sand toys, and more. Shop online or in our store. Downtown Wenatchee, it's all here. It's the NCW Life Channel, and not long ago, I got a text message from my buddy Paul Collard, and he said, hey, I have a friend who's into bodybuilding, and she is not young, is how he worded it, I think. We have Maggie Rivera joining us here on the NCW Life Channel. Maggie, and I asked you beforehand, it's okay to say how old you are? Yes, that's okay. correct. <laughs> Maggie is 62 years young and she just won a bodybuilding competition in New Jersey uh, just recently, uh, 4th of July weekend. Uh, Maggie, first of all, thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you. So tell me about what, what happened, first of all, last weekend. New Jersey was the Nationals Masters Bodybuilding um, National Competition for Masters. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. And how'd you do? I took the overall in the 60 plus to obtain my IFBB Pro Card. Congratulations. I thank you. How long have you been involved in the bodybuilding part? Or I guess, let's go back, how long have you been into fitness? I have been into fitness for all my life. I played high school sports and then I just continued um, running and going to the gym. And then about my 50th birthday, I wanted to do something different. I was working out with a friend that actually already did a um, bodybuilding show and she's like, hey, I've done that. So we got with Chance Harris, who was my trainer at the time, and well, he still is. And he, I told him this is something I wanted to do and he's like, let's do it. By the way, Quincy Jackrabbit here, you know, go Jacks. Go Jacks. Uh, so <laughs> high school, you're involved in athletics and things like that, but like, you know, there's some that are involved in athletics and you know, you have to keep up your your shape to do that but it sounds like you just continued to keep in shape ever since yes i did i did like i said i played high school sports i've I always i used to like i was a runner and i i would still like to run but i kind of like the bodybuilding physique a lot better <laughs> and it's probably better for me anyway how do you go from fitness to bodybuilder you said you want to do something for your 50th that, that's a big difference though isn't it between just keeping in shape and being healthy and then going into bodybuilding. Oh, absolutely. Um, I was already, um, like I said, I worked out with Chance Harris. He was a personal trainer at um, a different gym and then he opened his own gym, CrossSport. And um, I always did um, weights with him. And it was just, I thought, mm, something different. On my 40th, I did a marathon. And then on my 50th, I wanted something completely different. And so we just hit the weights a lot harder than what we did before. And then we added in a diet. How was that change for you? Was it easy? Was it hard? Was it just a different routine? Um, it was a completely different routine and it got more difficult the higher you went up because you go, you know, you want to compete, you compete and then you get to nationals and then, you know, you're in pro and then um, your diet just gets um, where you want to get more gains. So you include, which I should have anyway, was include an off season diet where you just eat and eat it's good food but it's eat and eat and you want to gain some weight um, so that you can gain muscle okay so regular people that are couch potatoes or whatever there's their food and then there's your food so when you say eat and eat and eat what does that consist of kind of generally speaking? Uh, we started with um, red meat and lots of rice potatoes eggs oatmeal um, pancakes. <laughs> that was the best part of off season. <laughs> we did pop, uh, we did pancakes and eggs and whole eggs, red meat, lots of rice. We always had rice. Um, and then we kind of started tapering off from the red meat and we went into like turkey and chicken. And then we went into whitefish. Okay. And that was my diet because, um, some of the people are already too lean, so they'll stay on the red meat a lot longer or the high calorie surplus. I, um, I gained weight and then I ha slowly had to peel it off. So there's a difference though between when you say off season and on season or in season, 
as far as you're still working out the whole time, right? Yes, absolutely. Your, um, your workout is a little different because your uh, lower rep, you have absolutely no cardio. And then um, that was mine, like I said, because I was already pretty lean from the other previous contest. And then um, you start adding in a little bit of cardio, but it's slow, steady state cardio so that you will just burn fat and not take anything from the muscle. What's your body fat? You know, I haven't taken it. Okay. Because I took it after my last show and I was at 11. And then I took it before I started my show and I was like at 14 and I freaked out and my coach said, don't worry about that. <laughs> so take, take me back to that first competition of showing yourself in front of people and having them, I mean, you got people judging you and things like that. That for me seems like a very daunting challenge. Oh, I think I was kind of excited. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got, I'm getting away from the runner body and I got a little bit of muscle. And I thought I was really muscular then, <laughs> but I had little muscles and it was, it was rewarding, but you know, and so. Were you nervous to, at all to, I mean, get up there? I and, was not you nervous. You guys don't wear much when you're on stage. Exactly. And <laughs> <laughs> I was a little nervous and I, and I, until I got on stage, then I could like feel my muscles like, Ooh, I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you just kind of go through it. And like I said, the suit, um, I guess it didn't bother me. Okay. Because There's a, a difference in just, you know, building muscles and things like that. And then being able to flex those muscles, right? I mean, that's a whole training oh, in and of itself, right? Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's why um, going to posing practice is so important. And I have the best posing coach. His name is Tino Robles. And I would drive to Tri-Cities every, every Saturday. That was posing practice day. And yes, you have to train that muscle. And we did a lot of posing practice. Was that fun? Was that a pain in the butt? What was, <laughs> what was it? It's a workout in itself because you're just like holding the muscle, releasing it, holding it. And you have to, even though you're only on stage for 30 seconds, the practice is an hour long every Saturday. So what was your biggest challenge for muscle group for building it or flexing it or when you got started to where you are now? Uh, I think the, the diet. Okay. The diet, uh huh. Because it was so important, and you're thinking, oh, I have a cookie. I'll run a little bit more. That's not the way it works. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yes, uh huh. Because, you know, that saying you can't out exercise a diet? True. <laughs> uh, there, I asked my wife this question. I said, okay, who, this is who I'm talking to. She's a 62 year old bodybuilder, amazing shape. What would a question be for from you to her? And she said, well, being a person that is still struggling with the later stages of menopause and the hormone change and all of that stuff that, that not all women, but a lot of women go through. How did you get through that? Because you've been doing this a long time. You've been in fitness for a long time. Maybe you weren't bodybuilding when you went through that, but that's still a challenge, right? Exactly. When I was 40, I think it's when I started having the hormone issues and um, Chance was my trainer at that time. And I would tell him and whine to him, I'm getting fat, I'm getting fat. He's all like, relax, you'll get through it. It's just that everybody goes through it. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. And then um, when I started bodybuilding, I went with um, Susan Matheson Graham and she gave me a book on hormones that I read through and I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, and then um, the next year when I signed on with Susan again, she gave, told me that, um, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go get your hormones checked, your testosterone levels, and your thyroid. You need to have those checked. Other words, we're gonna spin our wheels. And so I went to uh, Ready Medi and I, with Carl Lambert, and we did all that. And sure enough, my testosterone levels were low. Uh, my thyroid was slightly off and my hormones were off. So we took care of all that with, with some um, hormone, um, medication, the thyroid medication, and some testosterone. I felt great. How, so, how long was that process? Because that can take a while. Um, you know, Carl did it with a blood test and he kind of went from there. So maybe six months. Okay. Okay. 
and it really made a difference for you. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure you get questions from women all the time. How do you do this? How can I do this? How can, okay, maybe I don't want to be a bodybuilder, but I want to be better. So do you get approach like that? I'm sure even here at Crossport? Yeah, I tell them your best bet and where you need to start is exactly like Susan told me. Get those three things checked. What's next for you? I, you know, I didn't, I thought, I'm 62, I'm not gonna get a pro card, right? And I'm like, oh my God, I got a pro card. And so my coach, um, Tino Robles, he's like, hey, we're all going to Tampa in August. And I thought, you know what? I already have my summer all planned out. I have uh, my husband's retiring. I have a family reunion. I have my anniversary and I have trips already scheduled. But um, let me think about it. So then he called me and he goes, they're gonna go to Sasquatch in August, Tampa at the end of August, I think. And he said, and then um, we're gonna do um, Lake Tahoe at the end of November. And I'm like, hmm, November sounds good. <laughs> if not, he was gonna look for some shows starting next um, next year at the beginning of the year. How long does it take you to prep and be ready, show ready? As long as I stay away from the cookies <laughs> and you know, just crappy food, I can, um, I kind of know the process where I know what I have to mainly eat and about how much I need to eat. And then I try to stick to my diet. And then um, about mm, six to eight weeks out, I'll call Tino and I'll tell him I'm ready. And he gets me into a prep diet and then we're ready to go. So as you're getting ready, you mentioned that uh, a few grams of dietary change right before this last show that uh -huh. you were able to win. Um, what does that look like? You know, it was, it, it was so super cool because what he did is when he got there, he gave us a diet and we had fish and what we call a peak week diet. So we had fish and rice. And then, um, so we're trying to lean out and deplete the muscle and then from carbs. And then um, he gives us um, what we call a, a carb load. And so then he'll increase the rice and decrease the protein a slight bit. So when he got there, he kind of looked at us. Well, he looked at me and he's like, um, let's change it a little tiny bit. And so he took um, my rice down about 10 grams and my fish down about two. So then I seen him in about four more hours and he's like, mm, okay, let's do it this. It can make a difference that fast? Oh my God, he is so good. <laughs> That's crazy. That's, I know, that's what I said. But he, <laughs> and so he like took, and then he brought it down and increased it like a couple more grams. And then I seen him again, and like in the four hours, and he's like looking at me and he's like, that's what I want to take on stage. Wow, okay. And so I know, and so I was like, okay, so every three hours we would eat. And the Wednesday before at six o'clock, we stopped the water. So we didn't have any more water, but um, he still had me eat every two hours. And then until I got on stage. Now I've heard, you know, different things about bodybuilding and, and about that cutback that mm -hmm. happens because you want to be, you're, you want your skin tight. And yes, so are, exactly. you, are you dehydrated by the time you go on stage? Yeah, if you fall, because like on starting Monday, we only had eight, hour, eight ounces of water with, with each meal. Yeah. Compared to normally, you're drinking water oh, like a yeah, fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to deplete the water. And um, usually we take a, a diuretic right before, um, the night before we get on stage. But I was, he, it was right where he wanted me. I was well depleted. I was, um, had enough carbs in there, just the right amount of water. And he didn't want the muscle too hard. And so we didn't do a diuretic. Okay. And that was so nice when you get on stage because when you have a diuretic and you're doing your posing out there. Cramp mm, up, right? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you smile through it. <laughs> Man. Um, so I heard once too that there's an application of Preparation H. I heard that once that, that they'll rub Preparation H all over because it shrinks the tissue. Oh really? It, it, have you heard of anything uh, like that? Okay, all right. <laughs> Just something I, I heard. Today. I've never, never done it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, you look at you and you've got veins coming out everywhere. Uh -huh. Have you always been like that or is that just through what you've done to, to transfer am, your body? I am pretty vascular anyway, but this is, um, I still have a pretty healthy diet. 
because after we compete, we have a, we uh, we'll we'll indulge, you know, after the show and throughout the weekend. But then what we have to reverse diet. So we take the last diet we were on, not the not the peak week diet, but the last one we were on, and we just go backwards, and then we send progress photos to our coach, and then he um, he will decide where you know you should stay or oh that's good or not you know. But as long as you have a healthy diet. <laughs> so that that was my other question. Uh, after your competition's over, you've been you know weaning yourself from water. You've been doing mm -hmm. all these things and just starving yourself and, and things like that. So what is Pigging out for you after a competition? Hamburgers. <laughs> There's something I did have. Haven't had have, have a hamburger since November. <laughs> with the and bun I, and everything, or just the, the hamburger? Everything. I've wow. had meat, so I yeah. wasn't really deprived. I had red meat. I had steak, but um, but um, I didn't have a hamburger with the buns and everything and the fries. And so we, did, I did have that right after the show, and probably all weekend long. <laughs> and a little bit. Of, I'm not a pizza lover, but I had pizza. And then um, I went back to my pancakes, of course. <laughs> and then um, now I'll start to reverse diet, so. Okay. okay. What's your advice to women that are watching this that are like, wow, that is amazing? What, I mean, just generally speaking. I would highly recommend you do it. First of all, you will get in tune with your body. You'll get to see what you can actually do. It's tough, but believe me, you can do it. Can people, when they come to Cross Sports, come up to you and ask you questions if they see you here? Are you open to that? Absolutely. Because you work here too, right? Yeah, I do work here. Okay, uh -huh. okay. so yeah. somebody could call up and say, I want to work out with Maggie. I want to find out the secret to Mag Maggie's <laughs> success. <laughs> I'm open. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking thank the time. You. We appreciate it. I'm Maggie Rivera, 62-year-old champion bodybuilder <laughs> right here in Wenatchee. How about IFBB that? IFBB Pro. There we go, baby. <laughs> CNCW Life Channel. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Here's your coffee, that'll be five dollars. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, it's only five dollars. Oh, I like paying double. <laughs> Why? I've always paid more. You wouldn't pay double for coffee. So don't pay double on your heating bill. Cut your heating bills by up to half when you switch to a heat pump or ductless mini split and get cash back from Chelan PUD plus federal tax credits. Learn more at shalanpud.org slash save. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Seventy-five degrees haven't really moved much temperature-wise since the show began, but it is going to move. If you're just joining us, the heat advisory has been extended until 10 o'clock Sunday night. And if you look at the high temperature on Monday, I think they'll probably extend it again. It was supposed to expire tomorrow, but look at the forecast. There's no relief in sight. This is heat waves been going on since Friday, July 5th. It's now Thursday, July 18th, and there is no relief in sight for the next five days. 102, as you just saw, for the afternoon high. 69 for the overnight low tonight. Another 100 degree day tomorrow. Could be even warmer, depending on how cool we get tonight for the overnight low. 106 on Saturday. If we get there, that would be a new record. Record high on Saturday the 20th is 105, set back in 1979. The record for Sunday, July 21st, is 105, set back in 1994. Looks like we'll blow by that and we'll be close to a record high on Monday before we finally cool down on 
Tuesday and Wednesday. That's it for us. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.